This week, we preview both Japanese New Year's Eve shows. Look at New York MMA that is far from underground. All this in a brand new Dirty Dozen on MMA Inside the Cage. MMA Inside the Cage, presented by Elevation Training Mask. Welcome to MMA Inside the Cage and happy holidays. I'm your host, Cyrus Fees. Next to me, a long lost descendant of St. Nicholas. They call him Casey Claus. Doesn't have the white beard, but he kind of has like a snowflake pattern going on in there. Well, Casey Claus has a lot in store for the holiday season. You know, first off, I've got to bring to everyone's attention you have been yeah. on the naughty list, Cyrus. Sure. And it's not so much for what you've done, but really for your apparel. I think it looks pretty it's good. a faux pas, really. But <laughs> Kmart has taken notice. They've they've realized that you've been sporting their goods for the last three years, <laughs> and they've uh, provided you a little gift card. And now you're going to be Great. able to go in there, pick out maybe a new tie, uh, maybe a gallon of milk there wow, in the dairy yeah, section. That'd be good. Yeah. Thank so. you, Casey, so much, and happy holidays once again from us at MMA Inside the Cage. Let's get right into it with our MMA news flurry right off the bat. Abu Dhabi Warriors is back on the scene. Looking forward to their second event, February 22nd in the U.S. Now, you remember last event, it was Mauro Parak and Travis View. Now, Mauro Parak is taking on some stiffer competition in Brett DeGrim Rogers. Wow, just a big deal to have him in Abu Dhabi Warriors, but this is going to be a great test for Parak. Ex absolutely, man. You're talking about uh, Parak, who, who he faced Travis View. It was a really a contrast of styles in that fight where you had the wrestler versus striker. This is going to be different. Brett Rogers comes to bang. He's mm -hmm. a big, big dude. And if Parak can get past him, it's going to be big things for Mauro Parak in the future. I agree, man. And they're going to be released more about that big card as the weeks go on. So check out Abu Dhabi Warriors.com. Taking a look at the UFC. They had a big week. They had the Tough Smashes finale where they had Robert Whitaker from Australia winning the welterweight tournament. Norman Park from the UK getting the lightweight crown. And then it was Ross Pearson going over George Sadaropoulos, the coaches. He gets the big TKO. You saw that fight, Casey, and uh, Ross Pearson looked very impressive. He did. I thought it was going to be a washout. I thought that Pearson was going to take Sadaropoulos out there at the first of the first round. It really, Sadaropoulos per uh, persevered. He was able to get a, a good position, a rear, rear naked choke position on uh, Ross Pearson, but it wasn't enough, man. Start of round two, Pearson comes in, and he just he, he puts our office on ice. He looks great. And then you take a look at the tough finale for the actual ultimate fighter, and it was the coaches, Roy Nelson, taking on Matt Mitrione. Of course, he was subbing in for Shane Carwin. Then you had Pat Berry with the big KO over Shane Del Rosario. Uh, very interesting fight. You see these heavyweight guys, and we see a lot of storylines that are going to come out of this. What do you think of those two fights? Well, of course, Roy. Nelson looking great. Uh, props to Matt Metrion for stepping up, you know, for an injured uh, Shane Carwin. But but Roy Nelson, a huge, huge like character in this sport, and, and someone I think is going to move on to, to do really, really big things. He's going to be around for a long time. I think Pat so. Barry, love to see him get the win. I love that guy. Great personality. Uh, everyone loves him, and even when he has his downs in the sport, even when he's defeated, he always puts on a, a great show. So I, I look forward to see who they look to match him with next. If they put him up against Mark Hunt, what do you think? I think it's going to be a great a great fight. I think Mark Hunt definitely has the striking advantage. The guy's been around for a lot of years, but Pat Berry, tons of power in his hands. Great fight. That would be a tremendous fight. UFC.com for more. And then the XFC is what we're going to finish this one out on. And Nick Newell got the big win over Eric Reynolds. This is really the Cinderella story that has turned into Nick Newell just being an impressive force at the lightweight division. He gets the RNC in the first round. I did not expect for it to go that quick, but Newell is just surprising everybody. Every yeah. time he comes to fight. It was really quick win and a huge testament to Nick Newell's skills. I think the XFC has an incredible product in Nick Newell as their champion and really Nick has done so much to go from being that guy with a handicap, that handicap story and a rise to he's got legitimate skills on his own so terms. Too. I mean you're talking a, 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 a very side-by-side uh, -side story with like a Jean-Jacques Machado mm -hmm. in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu who was first considered handicapped, moved on to be one of the greatest competitors of all time. I think Nick Newell's on his way to that. Wow. We'll see what happens with that. He actually wants to get a shot at the UFC, and that's no discredit to the XFC, but he wants to get up to that level. Uh, Holtzman and Hicks, number one contender, XFC 22. How do you see that one going down? Well, I think that Scott Holtzman, man, he's a, a guy I've watched uh, very, very closely, and uh, a guy that has a huge uh, future in the sport. I think he is going to take the win in this one. I've seen him. He's been all over the United States and all over the world training recently. Uh, he even told me he, he's been on the match with Rory McDonald. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's he, huge. He, yeah, he, he steps up. He does what 
what it takes. And this is a former pro hockey player. This is a former pro athlete. He knows what it takes to get to a certain level in a pro sport, and I think he's going to do it here. It's officialxfc.com for more information from the XFC. As we take a look at the winner of the Clip of the Week competition, it was from the SEG as Nick Palmer, a guy that was actually only born with one hand. How fitting uh, that we talked know. to yeah. him. Yeah. On the same episode that we talk about Nick Newell, big win for Nick Palmer, great knockout, and uh, big props to the SEG for that footage. Right now, let's get to the first four clips for Clip of the Week. It's all about survival mode man, for the tour, isn't it, guys? Survival mode? No, absolutely survival mode. He's going to have to keep moving. It's over. What a win. Fighters, promoters, fans, get hooked up. Send us your best knockouts and submissions by going to MMAInsideTheCageTV.com and clicking Get On Air. In the very dangerous sport of mixed martial arts, one company has your back. Combat Sports Insurance is the Southeast's newest entity, insuring events, promoters, and fighters as well. Owner Jeremy Augusta, an area leader in insurance for the past decade and current MMA fighter for Team Oxendine, is focused on bringing the best coverage to your event and your fighters. Combat Sports Insurance, call today at 423-571-2519 or visit CombatSportsInsurance.com. MMA Inside the Cage, presented by Elevation Training Mask. Welcome back. Second round action. Cyrus Fees, Casey Oxenine, MMA Inside the Cage. Now, when you talk about the state of MMA and the state of New York, uh, it's kind of a muddy situation. Professional MMA is completely outlawed. They have not allowed it. We haven't been able to see those big UFC fights in Madison Square Garden, the mecca of combat sports. We haven't been able to see that yet. And we know that really digs at Dana White and the Fertitas. They can't stand it. However, amateur MMA is alive in New York. And there is one organization, Heavy Hand Productions, uh, the CNY Battleground shows that they put on. Uh, that are doing a really good job and they're putting together a really nice product. Casey, you've been in contact with their owner mm -hmm. and you kind of know the story with them. Well, I spoke with C Frank Cristiano, who is the owner, and you know, they, they really caught my attention earlier this year, uh, back in January when they had their fifth event. They had a few knockouts on there that, that got mainstream exposure on a lot mm -hmm. of the, the websites and kind of getting the lowdown on it. And really, they are the, you know, Frank, it, it really has gone above and beyond. This is a guy who is a restaurant owner, he is a, a, a coach, a football coach. Yeah. A, locally in his area and he, a guy that just saw that uh, he went to one of the mixed martial arts events there in New York and he saw that you know it really wasn't done up to par they were doing yeah. what they needed to do they were going to make a, a few bucks off of it and move on he was like you know I, he loves the sport he wanted to see things done in, in a productive way maybe to get this thing actually legalized on, on a pro level and really the, the truth is is that in New York City in New York cannot govern anything amateur yeah any sports. Uh, and so amateur mixed martial arts falls into that same category. So unless you have an uproar, an upcry from the local community to, to put a halt, to desist one of these events, there's really nothing that can stop a promoter from doing it. This is where the, the difference lies, though. Frank is taking it upon himself to make sure there is sanctioning, that there is insurance, that all of the bases are covered just like in any of the other states where it, uh, the, 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 uh, the commissions are, are in, in control that, that insist that you do these things. Frank is doing it on his own because he thinks that in the future that's going to help to to put a rise into the the possible legalization. Mm -hmm. You know, and so you're talking about it. You know, he goes to all the local police. He actually has a, a segment in his upcoming event 
event here in January 26 called Battle of the Badges. Where I heard you have about the, that. Where yeah. you have the, the the police officers actually jumping into the cage and doing a boxing event, you know, doing boxing matches, and they actually raise money for their their uh, local PBA fund. So that's really really cool. That brings the whole community into it. Now you had a similar situation in Tennessee, and we'll cover that quickly. Yeah. You kind of helped usher pro MMA into our state in Tennessee. Kind of a similar deal that he has going on right now, right? If you do things the right way, maybe you can bring that in. Well, we battled for MMA as a whole. Uh, pro and amateur both were illegal at the time. There was no sanctioning in place. So we did have to go uh, to Nashville and, and work on getting everything put into place and so forth. It was another year. We, we actually got amateur and mixed martial arts put into place. It was another year before they actually were able to uh, sanction any of the pro events. So it, there is a process to it. Mm. But I think that uh, with, with Frank, you know, he's doing the right thing to, to get the, the notice of the congressman, the, to, of the people that want to see this thing legalized to, to show that it's a good product that's going to help with revenue in the state. Well, there it is. And uh, their next big show is going to be January 26th. It's going to be the CNY Battleground number seven. You don't want to miss it. And we hope uh, to have some great highlights to show you following that event. Coming up in the next round, we are going to talk about those big New Year's Eve shows from Japan that everybody loves and an awesome main event of the week. But right now, let's take a look at it. Your next four clips for Clip of the Week. Fighters, promoters, fans, get hooked up. Send us your best knockouts and submissions by going to MMAinsidethecagetv.com and clicking Get On Air. I think for my son, he could have collapsed many times. I'm looking to be a young champion. I feel like I'm ready for the top. If he says he's going to be the middleweight champ, I believe him. No, very directed with his goals. Very good family guy, very serious. My daughter is my biggest fan, and uh, no one could argue with that. You know, I'm betting on Chris, 100%. I just don't see anyone stopping him. I'm confident. I know I can beat him, and I just want the shot now. MMA Inside the Cage, presented by Elevation Training Mask. It's third and final round time. Time to impress the judges. When you talk about those Japanese New Year's Eve shows, they're always exciting, whether it's K1, Dream, whatever. They always put on a very exciting show with all kinds of fanfare and pyro, and it's usually four or five hours long. Well, Dream is doing it once again, surprisingly, because they were out of the game there earlier this year. They're come back with Glory, 1FC, and now they're putting together a really big show, Dream 18 on the Fight Network. You're going to see some matchups that are very reminiscent of the, you know, the rise of Japanese MMA, right. those fights that we love to see. Melvin Mann, who've taken on Dennis King. Sakurai taking on Baroni. Bibiano Fernandez, who was the last Dream Champion, taking on Yoshiro Maeda. Then you have Kawajiri taking on Omigawa. And then the big main event that everybody's talking about right now is Shinya Aoki taking on Antonio McKee. What an interesting contrast of styles. McKee is just such a great wrestler. Well, they're both ground guys, you know, uh, but, but opposites, you know, when it, yeah. when it comes to the way they fight. Um, Antonio McKee criticized in the past for not having finishing ability. He's the guy that can take down virtually anyone in the sport, get top position, and and really pound you out without getting submitted. But then you've got Shinya Aoki, who can virtually submit anyone. So I think that makes for a very exciting contrast of styles. You're going to see you know, Aoki definitely going after the, the submissions, and you're going to see that, you know, possibly open up positions for Antonio McKee to uh, to 
to land those heavy strikes, man, because he does have uh, heavy, heavy hands. I actually been on the mat with him before. I wrestled him. If you had to Schwarzer pick one, though, who would you do? I would, I would pick Antonio McKee because I okay. think that he will stuff the submissions of, of uh, Aoki and he will get the positions and, and, and win the fight. Well, that's going to be an exciting event there with the Dream 18 card. Then moving on to the other show on New Year's Eve, there's going to be two big ones. You're talking about the IGF Bumbaye on Fuji TV. Now, Antonio Inoki is behind this, and this is a guy that's always kind of been involved in these New Year's Eve yeah. shows, always kind of brought the pro wrestling matches and made things entertaining because they love wrestling over there in Japan. Yeah. So he's kind of mixing things up with this event. He's going to have pro wrestling, MMA, and some Muay Thai on this one. So that's going to be very exciting stuff. You're talking about Mirko Krokop not doing the K1 style fight. He's actually doing an MMA match against Sinichi Suzukawa. Looking forward to that one. You know I'm a huge Krokop fan. Right. Tim Sylvia in the main event against Satoshi Ishii, a guy that took on uh, Fedor Emelianenko last year. He took the loss to Fedor. Then Minimal Man taking on Bor Bratovs, a guy from the WFC in Slovenia that has really run roughshod through that organization gets a ton of wins now he gets the biggest opportunity of his life taking on minimal man who is a japanese legend well enoki knows exactly how to put on a show he always has but what he's doing here is he is also he's, he's putting these legendary names in there to to really put that classic draw and then they're bringing guys in like boar the guys this is the opportunity for him to step up mm -hmm. and, and really shine on, on another level and, and that's really how mixed martial arts has to be run you have to use the the names the old school marketing names to get you know all those people into those seats and then yeah. you get to see those new guys that transition into those new spots i think it's a really really great show and i'm excited to see what enoki has in store oh man enoki always puts on a great show like you said we're going to go to our main event of the week and it is bor bratovs from one of his last wfc fights against marcus de gallo bratovs is amazing you're going to love this fight it's your mma inside the cage main event of the week The submission tactic is going to work here tonight. Bratosh has a lot of power and a lot of leverage. Good spread from Degalo. He was nearly taken there. Underhooks. Double leg takedown, and Bratosh just satisfied with the single. Goes into side control. Keep it out the right side, please. And Bratos does it, but he's caught, and Degalo quick enough for an open guard. And this is where Bratos comes into his own. Degalo needs to be careful because Bratos will come in very hard and very powerfully. And he's in on top of Degalo. There's the ground and pound. Tries to go round the back already. Degalo covers up. Start to punch. Bratos in danger of getting a heel kick. Tries to come in fast and hard. And Degalo's seen the videos, knows what he's about, gets a leg in the way. Degalo with half a butterfly there. And uh, there's a cut underneath the right eye of Bord Bratos. And Degalo's seen it. He'll try to use his hands here. Lots of swelling. And Bratos not used to this. That eye looks very dangerously like it could close. Bratos will want to finish this quickly. There's the power, there's the leverage, down he goes, single leg takedown. Bratos in half guard. Stop. And at the end, round one. We go to round two for this WFC MMA rules. Working defensively. And there's the heel kick. And again, and Bratos slow off the mark, and that cut's opened up. Oh, and there's a leg bar. Has he got the leverage? De Gallo having to really lift up to take the pressure off. Bratos hasn't got the leverage, but he's got control of the right leg. Or Bratos didn't get the clean in that he wanted, the 10 second clap up. And Degalo has an arm for an arm bar. Oh, and that was an absolutely crunching body slam. Round three, the third and final round. Marcus Degalo takes on Bor Bratos. Has he got the room to move? He has. Starting to put the punches in. 
and it's overwhelming now as Bordrato strikes forward. He's got the full mount position. In goes the ground and pound. The Gallo taking immense shots. There's an armbar. Has he got the submission on this? The top hat. He's submitted Marcus De Gallo. Fighters, promoters, fans, get hooked up. Send us your best knockouts and submissions by going to MMAInsideTheCageTV.com and clicking Get On Air. MMA Inside the Cage, presented by Elevation Training Mask. Well, it's time to close this one out, Casey, and the only way we can do it is with your final four clips of the week. Let's check them all out. One by one, it's a dirty dozen. Oh, absolutely survival mode. He's gonna have to keep moving, it's over. What a win! MMAinsidetheCageTV.com and cast your vote to see who takes home that prize package from Hunter MMA, BAM Fight Gear, Gamma Labs, and of course, Elevation Training Mass 2.0. Find us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at MMAITC, and subscribe to our exclusive YouTube for all those great interviews that we got in Australia. I'm Cyrus Fees. I'm Casey Oxnard, a.k.a. Casey Claus. And <laughs> we'll see you next week. Inside, Inside the, the Cage. cage.